Hello, this is Harriet Fraud with Capitalism Hits Home, a show about how capitalism helps to shape our personal lives and interacts with our personal, political, emotional, home lives. Today, I want to thank you all. I want to thank our Patreon members for helping sustain us. I want to thank Democracy at Work for sponsoring this program. And I want to talk to you about eviction. Because 40.1 million Americans are now on the brink of eviction. That's about one out of 10 Americans. Why? Actually, it's more than one out of 10. 46 states will allow evictions by October 31st, the end of this month of October. So, so many million, 41 million people are in danger of losing their homes and their children, of course, lose them too. This is an area where capitalism literally hits home where we live. Capitalist housing market is actually a threat to life itself for 40 million Americans. Now, is that an exaggeration? Well, actually, it's not. And that's why countries like Spain, China, and um, Belgium, and others don't allow capitalism and the market to exist in housing because you're basically threatening people's lives if you evict them. Well, what are the necessities of life? What would give you a right to life, a real right to life? One would be healthy food, which of course we don't have, because our food is pesticide laden, because the food that's the cheapest is the most pesticide laden, because people are exhausted and demoralized and buy fast food or big bags of Cheetos, Fritos, and Doritos, which have no nutritional value to speak of. The average child who is poor in the United States eating all sorts of junk, gets as much nutrition from that junk food as a poor Nigerian child getting a half a cup of lentils a day. Also, clean water is required for life. And as we know from Newark's scare with the lead in the water, from Flint, Michigan's polluted water, and from water everywhere, All Americans don't have access to clean, healthy water. We need breathable, clean air. We don't have that necessarily. Poor neighborhoods are near the incinerator or near the highway. Most highways you go down, and that's true. I live in New York, so the uh, highway along the FDR surrounded by projects in Connecticut, 95 in New Haven is surrounded by projects who are usually located right near the highway so that they can quickly be uh, put down in case there's a rebellion and because those are the most polluted areas and so they're often the least desirable. That's why poor children get asthma so many times more than rich children, because they don't have access to clean air. You need rest and restorative sleep, which means you can't be required to work swing shifts where you're on days one week, nights the other, and you don't know 
how to plan because sleep requires a reasonable, predictable rhythm. You need shelter. You need shelter from rain and wind. You also need temperature regulation so that you can't get freezing cold in the winter or over 100 degrees hurting you in the summer. Well, Americans don't necessarily get that. And they certainly don't get that on the streets. There are 78,000 people in my city of New York City who are homeless. Right now, they can't wash their hands, obviously. There's no clean running water for them. There's no necessarily safe shelter, no physical safety. The air, which is often, if they need heat on a heat vent, is not breathable. It's difficult to get rest and restorative sleep if you're sleeping outside or if you're in a dangerous shelter. And the shelter system in New York is more advanced than many, but it's dangerous. Full of rats, roaches, people smoking, filth, which take away the basic necessities of life. And those are the results of eviction. So that, you know, you know that this is a huge national problem. 40 million people. They may be in shelters, homeless shelters, but in New York, which is a more advanced place in terms of shelters, they have unsafe cooking spaces, toilets that don't work, Lead paint contamination, which is dangerous for children and can lead to um, retardation in children. And generally, physically dangerous conditions. So, you know, in L.A., an attorney representing homeless people, because they have a huge homeless population, wanted a judge in a South Orange County federal lawsuit to shut down a month-long outdoor shelter right near, uh, well, in San Clemente, right near Los Angeles, that the city set up as a way to move people out of the city. Because if you live in L.A., it's very hard to get to a beach or anywhere else where there's a bridge because there's too many people living under it to get through. So they wanted to get those people out of the city. And in seeking a temporary restraining order from the district church, um, the district judge, their request alleges that a site at the city storage lot intended for 32 homeless campers had become overcrowded, has no shade, no drinkable water, no access for the disabled or the elderly, and lacks any kind of servicing for its portable toilets, many of whom don't work. So what you're talking about is that the homeless and the evicted lives are threatened. This is the motion for the restraining order. The half-acre parcel on Avenido Pico is on a hillside not far from the North Beach parking lot where earlier homeless encampments are located. It's declared a homeless zone by the city council after people complained about homeless people defecating in the public and using drugs, among other safety issues. Under threat of arrest, the city forced homeless people to move to a barren piece of land previously found unfit for human or animal habitation. 
Those were the statements by the lawyers for the homeless, who also crowd under bridges and wherever they can, where there's no water. And these places become dirty COVID incubators in a time, in this time of COVID, because people can't take the precautions. They can't wash their hands. They can't keep things clean. They can't spread out. They don't have the room. They'll be arrested. But eviction is also very unsafe for mental health. What people need for mental health is attachment to people they can trust. They need reliable, consistent bonds with other people they can count on. They need to know what will happen to them. They need to have some control over their lives. They need to avoid pain and self and have some self-enhancement possibility. They also need connection to the outer world, to a sense of agency that they can do something in their world. None of those bonds, none of those things can happen easily if one is evicted and homeless. So we are subjecting people to a constant fear of insecurity, of physical danger, and of anxiety. Even the threat of eviction makes people so anxious that their bodies change. The children of people threatened with eviction when they are born are low birth weight, small, and less viable than the children that are born out of people living in safe conditions. So U.S. capitalism in its private housing market has abandoned one out of 10 of us. They've really hit home. In our Constitution, it says, we hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable, that all men, they mean people, are created equal and independent. And from that equal creation, they derive the rights inherent and unalienable, of which are the preservation of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. How can you pursue happiness if you're homeless? You can't. No system that abandons its people on that level deserves to exist. No government and no system deserves to exist that can't give its people the basic rights to life Not that crap about not giving people abortions, but the right to healthy food, clean water, breathable air, rest and restorative sleep, shelter, temperature control, and physical and psychological safety. Now, what could we do about it? Well, we can look to what other people have done about it. We can look to even a country that's poorer than ours, like Spain or Cuba, where landlords are not allowed to evict people. We can look to countries that take buildings that have many abuses, and there are buildings that could hold 57 million people in New York City alone that have repeated violations over five years. If those buildings with repeated violations that are not fixed over five years, that take away the basic safety and health of their tenants, they could be taken over by the government, the city government, the state government, and made into healthy, livable dwellings from which people would not be evicted because they could pay affordable rents. The San Francisco Housing Initiative in San Francisco owns these really nice housing units where you pay according to your income. 
And so rents run from about $40 a month down to $18 a month, particularly in the pandemic. Of course, that's possible. You could also take the top budget item in our whole budget, which is military, where we have enough to blow the world up seven times over and more than the next 10 countries that are most militarized together in terms of armaments. And we could give that money for the basic necessities of life. Just like we could tax the rich. We could tax billionaires. We could look at who's profited from the war, and we could tax them. So, for example, um, there was a study done that was reported in The Intercept where $10,000 invested in defense stocks in the Afghanistan war, when it began, is now worth over $100,000. If there are five contractors, Boeing got a return during the pandemic of 940, excuse me, 974.97%. They should be taxed. Raytheon's total return was $331 million and I'm sorry, they went up 331 million point 49 percent. The annualized return for Lockheed Martin went up 139 percent. General Dynamics went up 625 point37. Northrop Grumman Grumman returned at 1,196.14%. Of course, these whoever owned these stocks has to be taxed, not rewarded for their investment in war. Our country has to experience radical change in order to give people the right to life. Because any system that denies us the basic needs for physical and psychological life has no right to exist as a system. This program is brought to you by Democracy at Work and by our Patreon members. And of course, we welcome everyone to listen to share democracy at work, and to share this podcast, Capitalism Hits Home. If you can give money to us, all the better. But share it so we can get the word out. So thank you all. Thank you for being with me today. Bye-bye.